Okay, so it looks like the recording has started, so I'm going to hand over to the Chair, Councillor Anna Abella. Thank you, Naz. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Councillor Anna Abel. I'm the Chair of the Licensing Subcommittee. Um, this meeting is being recorded and we're going to start off with introductions. Um, Councillor Peacock, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, I'm Councillor Sheila Peacock. I'm a councillor for South Tottenham Ward in Tottenham. Councillor Bartlett? Hi, I'm Nicola Bartlett. I'm a councillor for West Green Ward. Thank you. Um, Sadakor, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Sadakor Rahman. I'm the legal officer from Haringey Council. Thank you. Dahlia? Hello, good evening. I'm Del Barrett. I'm the licensing team leader. Thank you. And Nazir? Uh, good evening. I'm Nazir Chowdhury. I'm Democratic Services and I'm clerk to this meeting. Thank you. Um, do we have the applicant on the call? We do, yes. Hello, sorry. My uh, or our camera, for some bizarre reason, is not working. Um, so it's not found. But yes, I'm Andrew Major, um, Head of Operations for Haunted Town Hall Arts Centre. And hello, I'm Remy Wanless. I am the Operations Manager for Haunted Town Hall Arts Centre. Thank you. And will you be representing yourselves or is there... Um... No, we also have Joe Harvey from Poppleston Allen on the call who will yeah. be representing us. Yeah, like good evening. My name is Joe Harvey. The, yes, of course, it's Joe Harvey. I'm a solicitor from Poppleston Allen Solicitors. Um, I have prepared some submissions, which I think you've hopefully already had an opportunity to consider. Thank you, uh, Mr Harvey. Um, and do we also have the objectors on the call? So I understand that the police have withdrawn That's their correct. objection. That's correct, Chair. The police representation has been withdrawn. You do it was it still in the pack at the, at the time when this was printed um and also chair i have not had any um confirmation from the three residents to say that they're going to be in attendance this evening either i see i'm just checking who is online um i don't see the residents either i, I wonder sadakor if you could give me a view if if we don't have any objectors on the call, do we proceed to hear the yeah. the applicant only? Yes, yes, we can. We've 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 had their. I think we've had some representations for them. So yes, uh, uh, we've uh, had you, written you, you, representations. You, you, you can you can consider those and give them what weight you think is sufficient without their presence yeah. being here. Thank you. Uh, that's very helpful. Um, so before we proceed, I'd like to remind you all that this meeting will be available for public viewing. Um, Clerk, are there any apologies for absence? There are no apologies received, Chair. All members are present. Thank you. And are there any items for urgent business? No items received, Chair. Thank you. Um, do any of the members on the panel have any declarations of interest? No, no. Thank you. Um, so I'm briefly going to summarise the procedure. The procedure for the meeting has been emailed to all participants by the clerk. For the purposes of any members of the public view watching this, we will first hear from the licensing officer. After that, the applicant will present their case to the subcommittee. Um, the subcommittee will have the opportunity to ask questions, and if, if the objectors do join us, they will also have that opportunity. Then if the objectors do join us, they will present their representation and the subcommittee and the applicant will have the opportunity to ask questions. Um, at the end of the meeting, all the parties will have the opportunity to sum up and then the meeting will conclude to allow the subcommittee to deliberate and reach a decision. This decision will then be provided in writing within five working days of this meeting. A few housekeeping rules. If you wish to speak, please raise your hand and direct all communications via the chair. That's me. We will take all papers as read, um, so there's no need to repeat anything um, that was already in the pack, but please um, do draw our attention to um, anything you'd like us to focus on in the pack that we received. Um, I understand that the applicant has asked for 15 minutes um, to speak, and I have decided to grant this 15 minutes of speaking time. When speaking, please be succinct and do not exceed the allocated time unless um, your request for an extension of time has been granted by the chair. 
please do not share the addresses of the speakers. And in the event that there are several speakers for each party, please avoid repetition and perhaps consider having a spokesperson to address all concerns. So we'll move now to the only item on the agenda, and this is an application for a variation of a premises license at Hornsey Town Hall Art Centre. Ms Barrett, please can you introduce your report? Thank you, Chair. The committee has before them this evening the application for the variation of the existing premises license for the Town Hall Arts Centre in Broadway, sorry, in the Broadway Crouch End London N8. The application is submitted by FEC Time and, Square, Time and Space UK Limited, um, who will be trading at Hornsey Town Hall Arts Centre Limited. Um, they're asking for a number of um, things to be done here, Chair. Um, firstly, to amend the registered office of the premises license holder. Um, the application then goes on to seek the following, and that's to amend the approved plan to add Hornsey Town Hall Square, to add a cafe on the ground floor, to amend the area for license for activities, including the co-worker space on the ground floor, to add the commercial kitchen on the lower ground floor, to add a cinema and, and mayor's parlour on the first floor, to remove license for activities from the corridor on the first floor, and to add a food and beverage bar and chamber balcony on the second floor, and also to add a roof terrace as well. Within the additional pack chair, if I can take you to... Um, sorry, bear with me. I think it is page 129. Is it? I believe so. Yep, page 129, Chair. There is, in fact, page 130. There is an update, an updated list of what is actually being requested, Chair. So you've got the summary of the variation sort there with... And within that, you will see the timings as well that have been agreed. So um, to license the Town Hall Square, for instance, for the sale of alcohol between 10 and 9 p.m. And it goes on to say for one weekend per month and for 10 days each month in July, August and December. Um, and that regulated entertainment also in the Town Hall Square will be until 9 p.m. chair. Um, there are other the other. Um, listings there chair for uh, the extending of regulated entertainment in parts of the building also but i think chair to bear in mind that the premises already has a license that takes them up to 130 this is um, extending especially in the supper room and the other areas now until 2 a.m therefore um there are to bear in mind three would be three in total outside spaces here at the um, art center you've got the town hall square which um, the clients have reached agreement with the police to utilize until 9 p.m there is the new roof space the terrace bar area um, that will be going on till i believe 11 p.m i'm not mistaken Yes, and there is also chair a the Hornsey, the Town Hall Garden, which is another green space, which can be seen from the ground floor plan in the pack also, which again um, will be utilised until 9pm, all really chair in an effort to ensure that public nuisance does not um, become an issue for nearby residents chair. Um, Chair, during the consultation period, um, the Met Police did make representation on this matter, and you do have uh, the outcome of that representation, even though that's now withdrawn. I would, however, just draw the panel's attention to Mr. Harvey's document here that goes that very helpfully at page 135 sets out the proposed license conditions and 
through you, Chair, if I can ask Mr Harvey just to speak about the section where it says additional conditions agreed with the Met Police, where it says at one there, where the town square is intended to be used for sale of alcohol after 2100, because if it's been agreed 2100 any time after that, would you know, if you've if the panel decides 21 hours is a cut-off time, then obviously that condition will need to be thought about and looked at whether that's actually viable going forward or not. Okay. Um, uh, yes, certainly. Um, sorry, if it, sorry, do you want me to address that now? Not now, not now. No, certainly. Do it. You can do that afterwards, Mr Harvey. Okay. Of um, course. Chair, in terms of what the, sorry, I was saying that the Met Police did make representation and that's the only thing I would really draw the panel's attention to on that. There are residents representations in the pack, Chair, and it's unfortunate that none of them have attended this evening, but in effect, the representations um, were based around the possibility of um, noise nuisance really being caused from events taking place here. Um, some people didn't, did not feel that the centre or that the town hall should be used in that in that way, and it was it is nuisance because it's around they talk speak about noise, unsafe environment for local people, and creating litter and so forth. Chair, um, in terms of what the panel is able to do, and in terms of recommendations, you may decide to grant the application as requested grant the application whilst imposing additional conditions and or altering in any way the proposed operating schedule. You may decide to exclude any license for activities to which the application relates or reject the whole or part of the application. Um, the town hall itself is said to be a multi-purpose use centre with various with varied accessible um, spaces that can be used in a variety of arts and events as well as work workspaces. The, the premises has and, and did previously hold a premises license and has been an, a venue used for entertainment in, in the past, Chair. In terms of the licensing policy, I would um, highlight section 3.2 of the report there, Chair. Um, the objective of the licensing process is to allow for the carrying on of retail sales of alcohol and prevention of public nuisance, prevention of crime and disorder and public safety and the protection of children from harm. It is the licensing authority's wish to, fac to facilitate well-run and managed premises with license holder displaying sensitivity to the impact of the premises on local residents. I would also um, draw the, the committee's attention to section 3.3 of the report, um, 3.8, 3.9, and also section 4.2 on licensing hours, Chair. Um, Chair, the applicants have helpfully submitted the additional pack. I don't have the initial pack myself, so I'm looking at it on the screen here, but hopefully you've got the additional pack that's got the latest set of conditions that have been um, agreed um, in, in the last few days with the police and the um, Popperston Allen chair before you there. Um, and chair, just to finish off, please, that the section 17 of the Crime and Disorder Act 1998 comes into play here, as does the Human Rights Act chair. And there I will leave it, chair, if you have any questions for me. Thank you, Ms Barrett. Um, I don't have any questions, but I wanted to check if Councillor Peacock or Councillor Bartlett um, no. wanted to ask anything. No. No. Um, would the applicant like to ask any questions of the Ms Barrett? No, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, so if there are no further questions for Ms Barrett, um, we'll now hear from the applicant who will be represented by Mr Harvey. Um, Mr Harvey, you have 15 minutes. Um, if you can make sure in that time to also address um, the point that Ms Barrett made around the latest conditions um, imposed um, as a result of your discussion, agreed to as a result of your discussions with the police, that would be very helpful. Of course, yes, um, I will don't think I'll be using my 15 minutes. Um, could I please just check um, the the internet quality uh, uh, seems to have dropped a lot of the, the video that I've seen. No, it's fine. Blocky. You, you can hear me OK. It's fine. So, lovely. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, well, councillors, um, I don't think anything I'm going to say to you is going to come as a surprise. You've read uh, the application, you've read my submissions, you know the building. Um, I, I'm sure 
uh, it's a building which you are very familiar with and, and therefore uh, what its use is again some. Oh, it's frozen. Um, Sorry. I think we have lost uh, Mr Harvey. Um, is is the applicant able to contact him to let him know? That yeah, we'll do that. We'll lost do him. That Thank you. Well. Thank you. We'll just give him a couple of minutes. Uh, Councillor Barrett, Bartlett, sorry. Um. I just had a question that Dahlia might be able to answer, actually. Um, the the licensing... Uh, um, Councillor Bartlett, I wonder if we should wait for Mr Harvey sure. to join again so he can hear your question and the answer and factor it in um, when he's speaking. So maybe we'll just pause for a minute for him to rejoin. Uh, just contacted Joe. He's just had a lapse uh, in his internet connection. He'll be rejoining again shortly. Do we have an update on when Mr Harvey will be rejoining? Hi Chair, uh, sorry we, we don't at the moment but I'll attempt to contact him again now. Thank you.
I tried to admit him, but I don't. Okay, Mr. Harvey, are you there? Fantastic. Um, Mr. Harvey, can you hear us? Yes, um, so I'm terribly sorry. I've had to reconnect up on my mobile phone. Can you see and hear me okay? Yes, we can. Um, I... So while you were away, um, Councillor Bartlett mentioned that you had a question on Miss Barrett's report. So I'm just going to take that question and then if you can start your representation from the start, yes. Mr Harvey. Yes. Um, so I... we'll just take Councillor. Actually, it's, fine. It's, it's, it's fine, actually. I've, I think I've... I've answered my own question by reading, <laughs> so okay. don't ignore me. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, okay. Well, I, once ahead, again, I, I, I apologise profusely. I, I think my son started downloading a game on his PlayStation and has robbed me of internet in my office. So I apologise for that. Um, as I say, um, much of what I have to say is not going to cause you any surprise at all. You've read the application and you've read my submissions. You know the, the location, you know uh, what the potential for uh, Hornsey Town Hall uh, Arts Centre is going to be. Uh, it will be operated by Hornsey Town Hall Arts Centre Limited, a, a company uh, which has its uh, origins and foundations very much in the heart of the community. Um, the, the designated premises supervisor uh, on the uh, license is Piers Reid. He is the uh, director of the company. Unfortunately, he's unable to to join us this evening, uh, but he is very much uh, part of the foundation of this company and uh, has grown and lived in the area his entire life and is very keen that this forms uh, a community asset and in order for it to be the community asset that it intends to be in order for it to offer the artistic programs and the performances and the you know, visual and performing arts uh, workspaces and for uh, for room hire to be available for local um, organisations and for local residents. There has to be a commercial viability to the premises, as I'm sure uh, you will uh, recognise, uh, councillors. Uh, and whilst it is right to say that much of what um, we wish to do can be done on the current premises licence which is in place, uh, there is very much uh, a recognition that there is some wisdom in looking at the license, looking at what it achieves and seeing if we can make it uh, more clearer and more definite as to which areas of the building are going to be in use, uh, what times they are going to be in use and uh, what conditions are applicable to the uh, locations and timings of, of the use of the building. Uh, and perhaps if I can deal with Miss Barrett's point now in relation to uh, the use of the outside premises. It's, it's right to say uh, that an agreement was reached with the police to meet some of the concerns that they had uh, regarding the use of the Town Hall Square. And uh, by virtue of the uh, conditions which have been reached, then the Town Hall will have, a ter have to have a terminal hour of 2100 hours. Um, I hope I think that's sufficiently clear for your needs, Miss um, Barrett. But certainly, um, in, in the, it's the, the wording of the agreed condition is is clear, um, and indeed it's been amended to confirm that the the timing which is sought for the town hall square is twenty one hundred hours. Um, so, realistically, um, councillors, um, the Every effort was made to be engaging with the community and its representatives to make sure that when this application went in, it addressed a lot of the concerns which are had by uh, the local community. And we would like to think that uh, having two back to back um, capacity residence meetings, um, that a lot of those concerns were heard and taken on board when we prepared this application and the, the fact that there were only three representations may very well, uh, you might feel, be an indication that uh, a lot of effort was taken to ensure that we are uh, listening to what people have to say in the local community. Uh, and it's very clear from looking at these three representations that what their concerns about are whether or not the operation of the premises is going to be uh, a, a public nuisance. Um, you'll have seen from my submissions what we have to say about that. And 
we would suggest that there are many conditions which have been put forward uh, which address these concerns uh, and arguably will it will surpass them um certainly it, i think it is right to say that uh, it is a recognizable concern of local residents that people leaving the premises late at night um, potentially under the influence of alcohol may very well be a source of disturbance for people who, who live locally, which is why we have put uh, in place, and you'll have seen it, the event management plan um, the, uh, for, the, for the local area. It's the events and local area management plan, uh, which we, we believe deals with those concerns uh, and uh, will work very hard to ensuring that when people do attend our premises, that they have a good time, but they leave in a manner which is conducive to recognising the needs of our neighbours. Uh, and as I've also mentioned in my submissions, it's, it's right to say that some of our closest neighbours are going to be people who are actually using the premises for, as their place of work. Um, and we would, certainly would not wish to be causing them uh, any uh, disturbance. Um, likewise, we're acutely aware that there is a hotel neighbouring uh, and we wouldn't wish to cause them any uh, noise nuisance, which is why every effort from the ground up of this redevelopment has the needs of, of local residents very much um, in, its, in its consideration. From the uh, acoustic um, measures which have been taken for uh, various rooms, uh, to the formulation of plans which are designed to meet these needs. We would hope that the, uh, that the council and its subcommittee will recognise uh, that every effort has been made uh, to make sure that this is a, a thought out operation which is going to properly address uh, the licensing objective. Whilst we're not necessarily only concerned with uh, the uh, prevention of nuisance, that is of course what the residents uh, who have submitted representations appear to have uh, it, it, their you know, their concern. I think it's also uh, important that the, um, the the subcommittee uh, recognise that the applicant has not lost sight of the fact that this is to be a community resource. The, the, the subcommittee will be aware that there is a community use agreement in, in place which imposes significant obligations on the operators to use the premises in a manner uh, which is ultimately for the benefit of the local community. Uh, and that has to go and indeed does go hand in hand with the desire to run the premises in a manner which not only makes it commercially viable, which ultimately um, allows the community aspect to be successful, uh, but does it in a manner which doesn't cause any concern uh, for any of the responsible authorities or indeed for uh, any of our neighbours nearby. Uh, and there's a whole host of conditions and I've referred to those in my submissions in my, sum in my summary, so I won't um, wax lyrical about those uh, now because you'll have read them and, and understood them. Uh, but ultimately as well, um, uh, councillors, you will no doubt want the premises to have an opportunity to demonstrate that all of these measures which are to be put in place, which are a far cry better than the piecemeal approach which was which is currently on the licence, you'll no doubt want them to have an opportunity to prove that they can run the premises on these terms uh, and will be more than aware uh, of the powers which are available to residents that if there are concerns which are not continuing to be met uh, that they can seek to have the premises reviewed uh, and that is a, a very powerful power that the uh, local residents do have uh, and uh, is one which I, I have no doubt would be utilised if uh, everything that we've put in our application turns out to not be followed. Um, as I say, um, councillors, I don't intend to to utilise uh, all of my time. Um, you've read what I've had to say in my submissions and in the application. Uh, I think it may very well be best if that we we answer any of your questions that you might have regarding this application. 
Thank you, Mr Harvey. Um, so I'm going to ask you a few questions to kick this off and then I'll open the floor to Councillor Peacock and Councillor Bartlett um, and to ask their own questions. Um, so, as you said, most of the resident concerns seem to be around noise um, um, being caused by by this um, this establishment. And you mentioned that um, the applicant has prepared an event management plan to manage dispersal um, from the venue. Could you give us the highlights of how this event management plan would work? Uh, certainly, um, the the document uh, is contained within the, the your, your bundle, um, councillor. So hopefully you have seen and considered that. I, th I think it's in page uh, 147, if my numbering is still correct. Um, there are uh, measures in place within that, including the use of um, crowd control where necessary, security guards with movable barriers. Um, preventing access from Hatherley Gardens, uh, which is obviously our nearest uh, residential uh, neighbours, um, directing people to local nearby transport links so that they are able to make their onward journey uh, sooner rather than later without having to uh, spend too much time uh, in the local area, potentially causing a, a nuisance, making arrangements for a um, a shuttle bus to be laid on if, if necessary, if those local transportation links are perhaps not sufficient to meet the needs of a particular event. Uh, bearing in mind, of course, councillors, that with the assembly hall, we would hope at some stage uh, that we would be able to put a comparatively um, large event on. It's important to have that uh, in mind uh, and proper marshalling will be placed is exactly what is envisaged. Um, security staff being at key locations directing uh, uh, guests to uh, their appropriate destination. Um, there may be more matters which are of an operational nature which will be had to regard to. Bearing in mind this is an operational matter I wonder if um, uh, Andrew might be able to uh, address any matters which I haven't raised that are part of our event management thinking. Thanks, Joe. Um, I don't think there's anything substantial I can offer beyond what you've um, you've detailed. I think, um, yeah, the, the presence of physical security is probably the, the most compelling um, part of the dispersal plan, which is essentially to um, say move guests of the building um, from when you know, there is egress from events, especially late at night, um, moving them away from the town hall square and the green as quickly as possible and um, you know, onto public transport or private transport that has been arranged. I think crucially, one of the one of the um, points that was picked up was access into um, Athelie Gardens, which is one of the roads adjacent to the town hall building, trying to prevent um, any post event footfall down there where possible unless of course people are you know using that road to access their premises um, but physical barriers in place across the entrance to Hathaway Gardens um, placed on our within our lease demise obviously not on the public highway necessarily but um, yeah to prevent to prevent uh, footfall down that road supplemented by physical security as well as you know notices of of polite polite and quiet uh, egress from the building um i think that that will be in our opinion amply substantial to uh to do all that we can do to move move guests away from the building and uh onto their onward journey safely and um quietly that's all i had to add really. i think it's I think it's also worth emphasising that one of the conditions that we had agreed uh, with the police is that where there is a proposal to hold uh, an event on the town hall square, which by its very nature is perhaps more likely to um, cause a, a nuisance uh, if it were to go beyond the uh, later hours. So obviously, we have reduced the hours which are being sought there, but also uh, there is a, a consultation uh, process with the uh, with the police and with the licensing authority to uh, make sure that there is an, a proper event plan specific to that proposed event. 
thank you. That's very helpful. Um, there was one point that I wasn't really clear to me in the bundle. Um, is is the venue only being used for um cultural events and as a co-working space, or is the idea that some of the the venue will be rented out as residential property for people to live in? No, it, it, there's no residential um, um, aspect to this application, uh, councillor. That's that's clear. So, um, when when you say co-working, it's just people who would rent the office for a day, or would it be a sort of longer term arrangement? Um, I can jump in if you want, Joe. Just to, um, the the co-working offer is on a, a flexible short term license basis, so. Anything from drop in for a day or um, I think the maximum we're offering is three month rolling licenses. There's nothing in terms of, um, you know, lease lease style um, arrangements in the building from a workspace perspective. It's a flexible kind of agile offer for, for local freelancers, sole traders, you know, micro businesses to um, to be in the building in the cluster. Thank you. That's that's no very problem. helpful. I'll I'll open the floor to to my fellow councillor shortly. I'm just going to quickly run through um, some questions. Um, you your um, your application also refers to the use of the rooftop. Um, could you tell us which measures you have in place to minimise to mitigate the risk of an accident where where someone could potentially fall off the rooftop? Uh, yes, of course. Um, included, um, Chair, within the bundle, I hope that you have seen some photographs. These are um, referred to as Appendix 2, uh, and those show the uh, the balustrade which is in place, which is, um, I don't have the exact height of that. I think it's it certainly in keeping with building regulations, um, but certainly I think um, and Andrew will be able to confirm this from an operational point of view, but certainly when um, the uh, roof terrace is, is in proposed to be in use, it's I think it's very much within our thinking that there would be uh, a member of staff present uh, who would certainly be able to, to supervise the area and reduce uh, the likelihood of, of that occurring. Thanks. Thank you. Joe. Um, if it's okay, just to add on what Joe was saying, um, it is definitely within our thinking to have a member of staff supervising the area, just keeping it controlled and safe. And then uh, in regards to the balustrade height, it is <coughs> above the 1,100 millimeter um, uh, parameter to, to keep it you know, at that regulatory standard. Thank you. And when you say a balustrade, is it is the entire 1,100 millimeter um, part of the balustrade, or it, or is it um, a sort of uh, rail with sort of the parts of it exposed, essentially? So, is it sort of uh, full coverage for the 1,100 millimeters? Uh, so yeah, so there's two different parts to it. There is uh, a fully sort of brick uh, wall side to the to the terrace, which is actually higher than the 1,100 millimetres. And then uh, down another one of the sides of the terrace, um, the balustrade from the floor, uh, floor to the, it's a metal pole attached to a brick wall. That um, height from floor to, to the balustrade is uh, 1,100 millimetres. Thank you, that's helpful. Um, my other question is, um, about the use of the Hornsey Town Hall Square. Um, so first of all, I'd like to clarify the relationship between the venue and the Town Hall Square. Is the square public property or is it part of your premises? The square itself is um, falls within the freehold of, of the landlord, um, the Far East Consortium International. Um, we will be granted the operating company, Haunted Town Hall Arts Centre Limited, will be granted a um, permit 
to uh, program that space from an events perspective. But fundamentally, at its core, it is a publicly, freely publicly accessible green space, um, as well as a square in front of the town hall as well. The events that we're proposing on that on that piece of land, the square and the green, are you know along the lines of farmers markets or you know kind of cultural festivals, much akin to the Crouch End Festival, which has been taking place there for a, a long time, um, and working in conjunction with the organisers of that event and other you know interested local um, operators of farmers markets or you know vintage pop up clothes fairs or whatever it might be, but um, yeah, free, free at the point of entry is the kind of um, jump off point for the, for the type of event it will be for the community. Thank you. And one last question for me before I open up the floor. Um, in your application, I understand that you're asking for um, supply of alcohol off the premises. Could you explain what this entails? Well, obviously, you'll be aware, um, Chair, the sale, the consumption of alcohol is not a licensable activity. It's the sale uh, of alcohol, and that can either be for consumption on the premises or away from the premises. Um, the because the um, due to regulations which were brought in effect by the uh, under the coronavirus provisions all premises licenses which existed at a particular date had automatically had an off sales easement uh, and therefore technically at the moment the application the, the premises license is able to sell alcohol for consumption off the premises and it's envisaged that that might take place from um parts of the premises which are more accessible from the town hall square than those which are not uh, but it means that um, alcohol sales can take place from areas such as the cafe for things like a, an Irish coffee or something of the, along those lines which means that the our customers don't necessarily have to sit in and enjoy their drink they, they are able to take it with them if it's something like a, a, an Irish coffee or, or if it's um, a, a, a bottle of wine what we had envisaged, for example, is that with these farmers markets or craft markets, there may be some um, cottage industries who might wish to come and uh, market their goods from the town hall square uh, at an event. And of course, uh, in order to do so, we would need to have the sale of alcohol for consumption off the premises. Thank you for that clarification. I'll now turn to my fellow councillors. Um, Councillor Peacock, you have your hand up. Would you like to go first? You're on mute, Sheila. I know this building extremely well. In fact, I was involved when Haringey was created and we were discussing which for the town hall should be the one for the centre of the borough. And this one failed because the um, council chamber was so small. And I was really delighted to see that you're going to restore that, the council chamber, which is very important to me. And also the art deco in the building and all the various rooms upstairs. Now, when I used to use the building a lot, um, there was an exit at the, at the back. And I'm just wondering what's the use of the, um, you know, when you go through the corridor and then you come out into the area, there used to be a, a public health uh, building just behind it. Um, I don't know if it's still there because I haven't been around that way just recently. But it'd be interesting to me um, if that back area is, is going to be used, and if so, what for? Uh, I think that's a matter I'm going to have to ask. Um, I've been to, I've been to the uh, location a few times, but I'm, I'm afraid, uh, Council, I, I don't recall that particular entrance. I wonder if uh, Andrew, I could ask you to respond to that, please. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Um, so the rear of the building itself, where yeah. the kind of very iconic Art Deco staircase um, is that has all been retained and restored as well. So everything everything within the original building itself has been restored to as close to its original standard as possible um, using you know, modern techniques. Um, the area at the back of the building the was where the you mentioned, I think it was a um, NHS centre, yeah. Princess yeah. Diana opened, I yeah. think. 
like whatever that might have been. Yeah. So unfortunately, that that is part of now where the residential scheme as part of the um, residential footprint as part of the scheme sits. Okay. Um, and so that building had sadly had no kind of protection order on it or listing or heritage kind of heritage significance, I suppose, other than um, the cultural significance of the building. So sadly, that's one of the assets which was um, which was lost as part of the grand uh, scheme. Okay. Can I also ask you a question about the um, the hall where the um, there used to be a theatre? I used to take school groups there for pantomimes at, at Christmas time, and there yes. there was an upper part to it. And when I was looking at the drawings, I couldn't see whether the upper part still exists. Um, sure. It had a very large stage and yep. then the seating area, and it was a very nice hall, and it was sad to lose it. So, is that upper part still there? Absolutely, yeah. So the upper part is still there. However, it's been um, it's one of the areas that's been converted to to create a new space in the building, which in our license, it's called a cinema. In reality, in terms of the actual operation of that space, um, it'll be more akin to a kind of uh, multi-purpose presentation space. So it's um, uh, by one intents and purposes, it looks like a cinema. However, we'll be using it for um, presentations for you know, universities to come in and do lectures in there for academic talks for um, seminars and, and also for potentially private hires for you know birthday parties whatever it might be um, so that that has formed a new acoustic wall has been placed um, in a dividing line in the hall which it actually lowers the capacity of the assembly hall yeah um, that's might be. Yeah. But due to the that that area is in very poor condition from a um, from an asbestos and structural perspective, okay. um, so it was repurposed in, in the manner I've just explained. But it also, um, in terms of how far away it was from the stage, we, we had it looked at by a theatre consultant called Theatre Projects, um, who were involved in the scheme throughout, and they um, they recommended that it would be better used to create the new space. But the the hall itself is looks magnificent in terms of yeah. restoration like you say the the stage the wooden paneling up the sides yeah. of the stage beautiful oh yeah well uh we'll give you a tour sometime thank you very much the other thing is the the lower basement um we used to put on um uh, christmas fairs in there and i just yeah. wondered because i'm sorry to be asking questions and um because i found the drawing is quite difficult to understand yeah so, sure um, what will the lower basement be used for? And will it be, will other people be able to hire it to put yeah. on things? Absolutely, certainly, yeah. So all, all it's probably important to note that yeah, all, all of the spaces within the building will be hireable. Um, and that's from the spectrum from, like you say, private hires for weddings, birthday parties, um, celebrations, whatever it might be, through to kind of fairs and then through to programme performances. So comedy, dance, music, theatre, whatever you like, they're, they're designed um, to be completely multi-purpose and multi-use. Um, the ground floor, the basement space, sorry, the supper room, as we are calling it, uh -huh. um, that it now houses a commercial kitchen for the building, which will serve events if we have external event caterers come in to serve the events I just mentioned um, across the building. And then the rest of it is the the supper room. So it's a it's a function space essentially um which yeah it's our kind of looks a bit like a jazz a jazz bar um with you know with we'll have a small cocktail bar in there we can do jazz events we can do stand-up comedy you can someone can come in and hire it for a industry showcase or whatever it might be but um yeah all of the original spaces in the building have been retained um we haven't lost any of the original town hall buildings uh old rooms sorry they've just been added to in terms of the rooftop bar the cinema the ground floor cafe i think okay. that's about it for new space thank, yeah. thank you very much that's nice really good explanation thank you very much thank you no problem at all thank you thank you councillor peacock uh, councillor bartlett would you like to ask any questions yes thank you um so a couple of questions um can I just, I, it picks up on one of your questions, Chair, about there's reference, I understand that the um, police have withdrawn um, their, um, their reports, but 
but there's reference in there to guests and 24 hour consumption. Is that a confusion on their part between the town hall and the residential hotel element of this? Sorry, Dali, you're nodding. Is that, is that yes. what happened there? That was right, an okay. early confusion on behalf of the police when they initially put in their, right. their rep. So, yes, because the hotel side had also put in an application at the same time also. Right. And, yeah. I just wanted to check because guests yeah. kept coming up and I, yeah, I was yes. getting confused myself. Um, yes, great, no, great, thank you. You also say guests sometimes, sorry. Um, <laughs> no, we, that's okay. Yeah, just event event attendees. Just we'll, moving we'll, we'll, in. We'll attendees, they can say guests and it'll be less confusing. <laughs> Thanks. Sure. So um, just just to confirm something, because there's been all these different talk about different spaces with different timings, is the latest time the supper club area in the basement, is that is and that's till 2 a.m. Is, is that still the the terms of the application? Yes, with the exception of um, any extension for New Year's even to New Year's Day, uh, standard um, the supper cl uh, club is the part of the premises. Uh, sorry, the supper room is part of the premises, which has the latest terminal hour. And that that is the the sort of basement room, is it? Um, that, that's under the yeah. That's it. That's it. Yeah. That's that's in the yes. That's uh, in the in the basement. Um, it's not a particularly large space as i'm sure um councillor peacock will will recall yeah. um it's certainly for more intimate gatherings shall we say yeah yeah I've, I've actually attempted swing dancing there if you can if you can imagine it and um, uh, that's <laughs> that's obviously quite a bit later than many of the neighboring venues in the the vicinity is there a particular um you've talked about the sort of egress i think it's called plan or exit plan when you're talking about having those presumably you know there's a different feel to that space it's for different kinds of events is there anything else that you'll be doing to ensure that people leave quietly just because it is so much later than um sort of the pubs around there basically uh, of course um I, and one of the reasons why um we wish to have uh this approach to the license is that it has a natural um this uh, staggering of the uh, of the times at which people might naturally leave if there was an event which is taking place in the assembly hall which finished at, at 10 o'clock for example then all the attendees at there will be leaving at that sort of time and therefore there will be a natural um staggering of, of when they other parts of the premises will 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 leave and having this approach we hope is a, a good way of dealing with that that is of course on top of the fact that um the the um, supper club, with it being a smaller part of the building, doesn't have the most uh, the, the the ability to have most too many people there, uh, which will in you know that by itself will greatly reduce the the, the capacity for causing uh, a nuisance because of the fact that there are fewer people. Um, but ultimately, um, Chair, I think it's fair to say as well that. Um, our approach to having security and having SIA staff on, in addition to our uh, plans and approach to how we deal with events, uh, will will make it very. Um, we we would hope it would make it very unlikely that those who have attended an event at the Haunted Town Hall Arts Centre, which is not it's not going to be the Ministry of Sound setting place in uh, Haringey. Uh, it, it is not that kind of, of, of venue, as I'm sure you'll appreciate. It has a much more cultural uh, theme to it. And we would we would like to we, we would dare to think that those who would leave, who, who are going to be leaving, having attended events at Haunted Town Hall Arts Centre, uh, one are not likely to be those who are going to cause a nuisance, but the measures that we're putting in place are going to reduce that that likelihood all the more. And I just wanted to quickly come back to the provision of alcohol off the premises. Um, I understand what you said about the um, continuation of the rules that changed under COVID. The I understand very clearly why if you've got um, things taking place in the square, like, for example, you know, as you said, like, I don't know, craft beer stall or whatever, you need that provision. But can I just clarify about the cafe? What hours, what hours are we talking about um, 
uh, what I'm, I suppose what I'm trying to establish is we do have a situation where you are selling alcohol to take away later than um, the the cutoff point for pubs, um, supermarkets, off licenses. Is there going to then be a discrepancy with some of the later venues serving serving alcohol at any point? Uh, I'm just looking up the um, part of the application which deals with that um, chair, so I can confirm the. Uh, the the timing for that, but certainly it is not within our vision uh, that this is going to become um, a bargain booze for for Haringey. This this is it's not part of our um, uh, our proposed operation that people will be able to call in at the cafe to pick up you know a six pack of of beer on their way home um whilst i'm looking andrew do you happen to have that time to hand for the operate the proposed operation hours to the um for the cafe yeah we're just drawing it up now joe um i think the the the, the question i suppose i'm trying to establish is it is regardless of intention or not I know from personal experience, if it comes to the end of the night and you still want to keep drinking, yeah. and you know about somewhere that will sell something late, it doesn't really matter if it's an art centre or whatever, no. it would sure. become a sort of magnet for that kind of thing. Um, and I think, you know, in terms of our objectives, we need to make sure things are in keeping and in line. But yeah. um, what, I, what I can say is that uh, the, the cafe falls um, within... Uh, what, what you might describe as everywhere else. So the the supper room and the town hall square are particularly um, uh, dealt with f f with different hours because the needs for those particular areas are very different to other aspects and other parts of the premises. In terms of the um, alcohol hours for um, everywhere else, that, which would include the cafe, um, the terminal hour for the sale of alcohol would be half past 11 Monday to Wednesday, um, 1.30 Thursday, Friday and Saturday and quarter to 11 on Sunday. However, um, and this is something that we um, we discussed operationally some time ago, the, the cafe is not going to be keeping those hours. Um, it, it's, it's, it's going to operate it as a, as a cafeteria um, not as in a you know some, somewhere that somebody can can call in on their way home. It may be that um, there there is a need to have some flexibility as far as that is concerned. Uh, but from an operational point of view, of course, the cafe has to be staffed, um, and it's not going to be staffed for that purpose. I don't know if Andrew, if you got. Check. Sorry, of course. And just on the supper club, will the supper club be selling alcohol to take away? Because that's obviously later, later. It's not. In, it's not envisaged that 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 will be um, will be the case. Um, I think. I think it's certainly our expectation that the alcohol for those who are attending uh, an event at, which is taking place in the supper club, the alcohol that they are buying is going to be consumed whilst they're attending the event. Thank you. Yeah, that's correct. Um, um sorry, just a couple more. Um. You, you mentioned the area that is described as a cinema is not necessarily going to be operating as one. I'm just my question is basically because we've already got two cinemas close by. Is it are you envision, envisaging a sort of programme of films on a weekly basis or is this more of an ad hoc um, facility for showing films or showing other um, other visual um, media? Uh, hi, so. It isn't going to be a sort of conventional cinema. Obviously, we are aware of, uh, you know, the two sort of uh, neighbouring cinemas that we have in Crouch End and we don't want to step on their toes. It's kind of always in our thinking. So it's going to be, we're going with the name uh, Screening Room. So if we're going to be showing films, it's going to be more of a sort of a quirky offer. It might be like, a, say, for example, I've had um, a, few, a few people from the local community inquire about putting on a South American film day or um we could do like a sort of you know charlie chaplin chaplin marathon or something along those lines so it won't be the sort of latest blockbusters and therefore not a conventional conventional cinema just something a bit more you know a bit a bit different 
great. Um, and just, sorry, just to check on the um, town hall space at the front. Um, you talked about it being, although it is owned by the um, the company that own the, the site, that the, the public yeah. will continue to have access, because that was something that seemed to, to be a concern of the residents who put objections in they they seem to think that they would no longer have that is that something that's that's kind of is that right sort of written down or is that just done on goodwill how does that how does that operate uh, that is uh it's very much part of the community use agreement um so there is sure. there is an enforceable legal agreement between the operators and the uh, and the council that the town hall uh, square will continue to be a, a resource for the uh, for the community that, that i'm just Thank to add to that, that was um, that was part of an agreement which was brokered by the Hornsey town hall trust um that we've been in very close contact with for the last five years um and they yeah as joe said it's a an important piece that that remains a publicly accessible space so no that's um yeah the only thing we'll be doing on there is i say programming free to attend events on that space um it might be obviously you know that at stalls you have to you know buy some stuff uh not have to be encouraged to um uh but yeah nothing we won't be locking off the uh the town hall square if that's that's the uh, i know that was an initial fear from residents generally yeah um but that wasn't ever um probably substantiated from their side I just have one more question if that's okay. Jeff. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, Dalia, did you want to? Anyway. Um, just Maybe on the, finish off and the, then we'll hand over to Dalia. Just on the roof terrace, do you have the capacity for that? And is the idea that you will have a bar that is staffed and then another member of staff to make sure in safety or how do you envisage that operating? Yeah. Um, sorry, sorry Andrew. Andrew. I was going to say, in terms of the the, the last question first, the the bar, uh, there will be no bar on the roof terrace itself. Um, it will be um, serviced by the food and beverage bar, which is on the floor below. Um, uh, and again, that is that is part of the of the uh, that is achievable by having off sales on the license. Um, right. In terms of its capacity um i don't have the up-to-date figures on that andrew i don't I, th I think the capacities are um still something which are they're removable feasts and i think there's there's still some uh, feedback from building control and, and the environmental health which needs to be taken into consideration but, but as i'm as i'm sure uh, you'll be aware from your local knowledge this is not a particularly large uh roof terrace i, I don't know if uh councillor peacock's uh has any greater knowledge on its uh, square footage than I do, but um, certainly it's not a particularly large area. Um, so the, so it, it's not going to have um, hundreds of people on there causing causing a noise nuisance late into the evening. Yeah, yeah. Just to add, I think um, from a fire capacity perspective, um, we're just checking that now. I think it's it's in, in the low the low hundred. Um, the low 100. Uh, we're just confirming it right now. I think we're talking about 120 as the maximum, but that would be a very, very, um, yeah, a very, very maximum. Um, in terms of staffing, as Joe says, there is a internal bar which is inside the building itself, which actually leads out onto the roof terrace. Um, Staff-wise, that bar will be staffed, and then the roof terrace itself will be independently staffed and, and monitored as well um, from a capacity and from a obviously noise um, and behavior perspective thanks thank you uh, councillor bartlett um, i'm going to hand over to miss barrett and then i have a few follow-up questions uh, myself having having heard the replies to councillor peacock and councillor bartlett's questions miss barrett Thank you, Chair. Can I ask Chair through you? Um, can can I request, please? I, I see that there is a condition in here for the means of escape document to be carried out and shared with the fire authority. 
I'm presuming that that means of escape document will also include the capacities for each of the various areas as well. And can I ask that that condition is therefore is at that the local licensing authorities added to that condition so that that document is also shared with the licensing authority and the fire um, department prior to events take starting to take place please so that we know the capacities that we're dealing with in the various areas please chair um, can i also say again so the i'm still a little bit confused about the town hall square so i'm i'm clear that alcohol regulated entertainment is going to finish at 9 p.m so for those continuing those additional conditions where it says about should the town hall square be used after 2100 hours what kind of events are you envisaging having out there beyond beyond that time and clearly they won't have any license activities to take it because they would have stopped at 9 p.m. So there won't be any sale of alcohol taking place. There are any regulated entertainment. I'm taking it. So please just want some clarity on, on that, please, as to what's envisaged. And in terms of the in the indoor bit, so, you know, indoor sporting activities has been applied, has been um, requested. What kind of sporting activities would you do? Because obviously, depending on the type of sporting activities will therefore you know, go on for us to be thinking about how are the, how would patrons for that kind of an event arrive to the town hall? So if it's a if it's a boxing thing, for instance, boxing, the boxing public come in their cars, you know, that will certainly have an impact then on what happens on the the residential roads nearby. So your dispersal policy would be crucial for things like that because obviously, you know, if they're leaving up one one late in the you know in the early hours of the morning going back to their cars and so forth along the local roads that is going to impact quite a bit so yeah just some clarity on that also please thank you i think um, if we just take the working backwards probably dahlia um from the sporting events perspective um we have got no plans to program any sporting events in the hall um or in the in the premises i think that was just carried over from the previous premises license uh and searching way back in my memory i think that the previous operator did probably program some some events like what you're talking about um i suppose um if we wanted to hold a you know ping pong competition in the assembly hall that might fall under a sporting event but um but certainly in terms of uh boxing or anything like that or snooker or anything like that we that's not in our um in our mind's eye that's probably about as thorough answer i can give on that one um in terms of envisaged programming as, as we said it's a an art center and the kind of you know for lack of a better word the vibe that comes with that versus a boxing venue as you say probably isn't don't really uh marry up together so we'll leave that to ali pally i think to deal with um but and then sorry remind me of your other questions <laughs> my other question was relating to the town hall square with it finishing yes. it for license for activities at 9 p.m sure. when do you envisage later hours and the, the one square being used for later hours for events good question i mean an example we can think back to is the um kind of closing event for the for the building way back in 2019 um where we had you know a a film i think it was la la land or something like that showing um showing at the end of that event to kind of close it out um so potentially a film screening beyond the licensable hours from alcohol perspective um but beyond that yeah we struggled to think for anything that's going to be programmed beyond beyond 9 p.m on the square but then again you know it's probably hard to for me it is anyway hard to think of now in the deepest darkest February months um but in the summer months you know daylight until nine o'clock in you know July so um yeah it's to define activities that we're thinking program beyond nine o'clock it's probably quite hard but it, it might be you know like to say kind of if there are still traders stalls that are, might be open still active on the square beyond alcohol sales there might be um yeah non-alcoholic non refreshments available still um 
if, if there is a movie or anything like that on on a big screen on the square um, yeah that, that's I, I think it's also cool. worth I think it's also worth mentioning um in relation to that because the um the, the amended condition um would still permit uh, an activity to take place on new year's New Year's Eve into New Year's Day, ceasing at 1 a.m. It means that that condition is still applicable on that occasion, uh, whereas um, without that rider, there would be no applicable conditions which would limit the, its use on New Year's Eve going into New Year's Day. Yeah, understood. But if, sorry, Andrew has just given the um, example of a film taking place so if the film was taking place that would be covered under the entertainment side of the license which you know are you saying that it's going to be limited therefore is are you saying that the, you're going to use the exemption to be able to show a film up until 11 p.m or something like that well, i'm still course, a little um, bit confused it, it's the if we look at the original um what proposed condition 11 was designed to achieve which was designed to limit the operational hours uh, and occasions to um 14 occasions and um 2300 hours that was negotiated with the police um d to a, a reduced amount which alleviated their concerns um as a consequence of that it would greatly as andrew has already acknowledged would greatly reduce the usefulness of the town uh, hall um, town hall square at later times and as a consequence of that we don't necessarily have any um any events in mind which would actually be applicable under these conditions uh, under this uh, this proposed condition that's not necessarily to say that at some point in the future to have some flexibility uh, that an event does take place um which is which is um permissible under these conditions but uh means that uh, our obligations with the police and with the licensing authority as far as risk assessment and uh, a plan is concerned that those those measures still do take effect thank you Mr. has your question been answered miss barrett or would you like to ask a follow-up that's okay i obviously you know it's for the panel to determine whether they go along with that agreed condition or, or not chair and just the other matter was um for the applicants to say if they're in agreement with the um, means of escape document, which should include the capacity for the various areas for that to be shared with fire authority and the licensing authority, please. Prior um, to events taking place, yeah. I, I believe, Miss Barrett, you're referring to proposed condition 28 um which the prior to the commencement of license activities the premises will have the benefit of a means of escape assessment uh, I, I don't think there's any sensitivity with that document that it can't be shared with the licensing authority uh, i wonder if andrew if you could confirm that um no i agree i think just a caveat to add that um the most recent means of escape report that we have might well be outdated by now due to the fact that you know, construction work has been taking place in the building longer than any of us uh, probably envisaged. Um, and the materiality of some of the doors, etc., may have changed in the sounds of time. So I think um, we would we would look to do a kind of as built operational fire risk and overall fire risk assessment of the building when we take occupation of it. But we don't know when that is going to be. <laughs> so um i guess it's a long way of saying we can show what we have um of course we can but just with the caveat of we will be um commissioning a as built fire risk assessment of the building um when it's when it's handed over by the contractor to us for our fit out purposes so i don't know what that means in terms of the conversation we're having right now if my ignorance that's fine. So long as we get a get the document prior to 
licensing Got activity it. started to take place. That's fine. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, exactly. That. As, soon, as soon as we get handover and we get provided all information from the contractor, we will supplement that with our own, you know, operational as built um, risk assessment, including fire risk. Sorry, Chair, can I just have one last question, please? Um, has the issue regarding to relating to um, toilet facilities? And again, this will probably come back to your capacities as well once that's all fine tuned. So the um, availability of toilets for your capacities expected for events as well. Is that a matter that has been ironed out as well, please? The, the issue of um, capacities, because of, of course it's a matter which is discussed with uh, building control, is still um, very much a, a movable feast and the availability of lavatories is something which is going to play a part in that. Um, so whilst we don't necessarily have an answer today, um, by the time that the building is in a, in a position where it can operate and it can trade, um, there will be a, um, a capacity which is linked mathematically to the availability of lavatories uh, and therefore the premises will operate um, in accordance with that. Okay. And just to finally add to that as well, that, that will almost certainly, by my estimation, make the, you know, fire risk um capacities probably largely relevant other than in the case of a fire but in terms of licensable activities wise we'll obviously yeah. we'll be we'll be going off the you know hsc guidelines in terms of sanitary um provisions in the building okay thank you thank you chair Thanks, Ms. Barrett. I just have two follow up questions that were um, prompted by, by some of the, the previous um, questions raised. So I was looking again at the brochure that we um, had in the bundle and I'm looking at the picture of the town hall square um, and in the picture you essentially have what looks like an open air cinema and I think um, Ms. Barrett was alluding to this as well. So my question is when you're planning to do this is the idea that this is going to be a silent cinema and you're going to give people um headphones or earbuds to to follow the movie or is a movie going to be blared out in the public square and if it's the latter if you're going to be playing the movie um how are you going to manage noise and how are you going to manage the risk that this will disturb nearby residents um we can use as a case study, I think, on on that 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 CGI that's been produced is actually produced off the back of the the real event which took place in um, July 2019, and had been a regular feature of the Crouchend Festival every summer as well in terms of um, outdoor the the provision of outdoor cinema um, at that event and previous Crouchend Festival events. It had been that the music was amplified or the, the film was amplified. But it certainly was amplified at a, you know, volume that would in no way cause kind of, you know, residents within, I don't know what radius, but to be able to hear it to a disturbing level. Um, and in our in our plans, that would be the case again. It wouldn't be a silent cinema. Um, it would be amplified in some way. But, you know, we would take in any feedback around decibel limits on that or whatever it might be to allow that to happen um so that but that, that was our thinking at the moment was it would be amplified it wouldn't be um it wouldn't be headphones maybe this is more of a question for Ms. barrett but is there is there a noise limit that would govern this um type of event or would under the current terms uh under the proposed terms would um, the applicant be able to to play a movie at any level, at any noise level? Uh, well, in fairness, Chair, obviously it's the prevention of public nuisance that is really the criteria that needs to, to be met here. But um, there isn't noise levels set around Hornsey Town Hall currently. Obviously, you know, it's not been used for large music events like our some of our other centres and uh, parks have, we do have that already put in place. So whilst there isn't that, I can confirm, however, that the Crouch and Festival have used the square in the past years and have done um, 
you know, put in their temporary event notices or, you know, apply for whatever they, they needed to, to be able to show films and have their bars and so forth in the square, um, which obviously, you know, what the Crouch End Festival will do, maybe not, maybe not use as, as powerful equipment as maybe, you know, what uh, a professional organiser may be able to to pull it together, to be honest with you. Um, but again, you know, if this licence is granted as it stands, so such an event would be able to take place in the square up until 9pm. It's the issue for me will be what happens after that 9pm, really, if they, the event was wanting to go longer, because obviously then licence for activities would have ceased at 9pm. Thank you, Ms. Barrett. And one final question um, from me. Um, so during when my, my colleagues were questioning you, you mentioned that um, people would people who are enjoying the roof would get their drinks from an internal bar and then come to the roof. Could you explain the route that takes you from the internal bar to the roof? Because I know that you know with certain rooftop buildings in London the route is a sort of externally facing staircase and that can sometimes be quite dangerous so it's a sort of external staircase that goes from the outside of the building is this an internal staircase how do you get from the the internal bar to the roof? So, um, it's luckily much more straightforward than that um, it is uh, either a just a single single door straight out onto the roof terrace from the bar, or there's an internal uh, ramp which allows um, BDA access from the bar onto the onto the rooftop. Um, but it, it's literally in terms of um, distance, it's uh, two meters, potentially. It, it, it's it's right in the same um, envelope, yeah. You don't have to access any staircases or anything. Thank you. Um, can I confirm, does anyone else have any more questions for the applicant? No. Um, Sadika uh, has his hand up, Chair. I see, sorry, I didn't see that. Um, Sadika, would you like to ask your question or make a point? You're Sadika? on mute. Sorry, sorry, just for clarity, um, and it's really a comment and since I'll be drafting the decision afterwards. Um, and it follows on from what Dali was, Daly has been asking about. Um, I'm just looking at um, the at page 138, which is the additional conditions agreed with the Met Police. Uh, and paragraph one, which says where the town square is intended to be used for the sale of alcohol after 2100. Um, the applicant, you, you've said that that's you're not going to be using that for the sale of alcohol after 2100. Is that that's right? Um, so is that just a typo? Does that need amending? Essentially, I think that's where the confusion lies. To some extent. Uh, yes, so um, chair. Um, the additional uh, condition agreed with the Metropolitan Police condition number one refers to that. However, that is, if I could draw your attention, please, to our proposed um, forgive me once I just clarify that. Our proposed condition 11, as a consequence of that condition, the use of the town hall square for licensable activities is capped to 2100 hours. Okay. Origi originally it was intended to be 2300, but as a consequence of that condition, which was agreed with the police, uh, it was capped to 2100. Okay, so that essentially that, that, that just needs amending essentially, is how I see it. Um, yes, because, it, because in effect, um, the the town square, town hall square cannot be used yeah. after 20, 2100. Yeah, because of 11. Yes. Okay, yeah. All right. It, it can, think. of course, still be used for regulated entertainment at any other time, which was the other part of the condition. Yeah, understood. Yeah, thank you for that. 
Thank you. Um, does anyone have any more questions for the applicant? No, um, I, I don't see any of the objectors. Oh, go sorry, ahead, Chair, Sarah. can I just clarify? Sorry, on the, sorry, Joe, on the police representation, regulated entertainment and sale of alcohol was curtailed at 9, 9 p.m. Did you just say it can, of course, be used for regulated entertainment at any time? Sorry. No, I'm sorry. I think I, I think I've probably added greater confusion where none was needed. Um, the 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 condition agreed with the, the police imposes an obligation to create a an event management plan. Originally, it was intended that it would be regulated entertainment at any time, or where alcohol was was to be sold after nine o'clock. Uh, because alcohol after nine o'clock can't occur, it's still this condition still applies where there is regulated ent entertainment at any across time. Across the site, across the site as a whole. No, uh, in the in the town hall square. So, so there is an obligation under this this agreed condition that where there is going to be any regulated ent entertainment in the town hall square, uh, we are under a duty to consult with with licensing um, with the licensing authority and the police regarding the event, event management plan. Um, sorry. Reducing amount, right. So if, if we propose to have an event which includes regulated entertainment, no matter what time of day that takes place or in the town hall square, um, it can only go until 2100 by virtue of the agreed conditions, but irrespective of the, of the proposed terminal hour, we are still required to consult with the police and with licensing on the event management plan. Right. Okay. Uh, it, I, I hope that is much clearer than I'd previously made it. Yes, you've mentioned 2100 hours in that. So, yes, that's fine. Yes. That I understood. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any further questions for the applicant? No. Um, so I don't think we've been joined by any of the objectors, so we will move to concluding remarks. Um, Ms Barrett, would you like to make any concluding remarks or shall I move to the um, applicant? No concluding remarks, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr Harvey, you have a few minutes to to sum up your points. Yes, thank you very much. Well, a, a good speech should have a good beginning and a good end, and the two should be as close together as possible. And that's what I'm going to try and do. Uh, firstly, can I um, apologise for the technical difficulty which I had earlier? I hope that uh, hasn't prevented me from being able to explain the vision uh, adequately for you. Uh, and secondly, can I please ex um, extend my gratitude to the uh, those working behind the scenes in the council who have set up this meeting and, and uh, have um, facilitated its date being changed to suit uh, some availability. Um, as I said earlier, um, Chair, nothing I say is going to come as a surprise to you because you've seen what this application is about and you, you know the site and know what its potential is. Uh, and we hope that you recognise uh, that this is going to be uh, a, a wonderful asset to the community. This is a formidable building, uh, which sadly uh, has not been realised for a, for a long time. And we have an, an exciting opportunity where this is able to be done in a manner which not only um, promotes the licensing objectives, which of course is your first consideration, but does so in a manner which actually means that there's going to be some uh, a real meaningful injection into the heart of the local community. And it's very exciting to, uh, to see uh, how this has progressed and to know that we are within striking distance of this vision being realised only makes it all the more exciting. Um, whilst we recognise that there are some, uh, some very understandable concerns, uh, we we hope that you you are able to see that we've had regard to those and we are committed to putting every measure in place which alleviates those concerns. Uh, and whilst we, you can never please everybody, uh, we would certainly hope that we can operate uh, Hornsey Town Hall Arts Centre in a way which um, means that there is the minimum of disruption to those who are local to us, uh, because ultimately we would like these people to be our, our guests and be our visitors on a regular basis. Um, 
I don't think I can usefully add anything else without repeating other things that I've said. Uh, so those are my submissions. Thank you, Mr Harvey. Um, so the committee will now deliberate on its decision and we will provide um, the decision within five working days of the meeting. Um, thank you everyone for your participation and have a lovely evening uh, for the councillors on the committee. Um, do stay on so we can deliberate our decision. Thank you everyone. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much for all your time. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening.